Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Quick Tech Tips and Reviews. My name is Tony and with this channel we bring you guys a variety of tech related content. If this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe and hit that little bell down below so that you're alerted to when new content is being released. In today's video we're going to show you how to set up an edge router to accept internet connections from two different ISPs with the failover option. All right guys, so in this diagram, I'm illustrating an edge router connected to two ISPs with ISP number two as the failover option. So if you look, I have ISP one connected to ETH zero and I have ISP two connected to ETH one. ETH two, three, and four are my LAN ports. So why would you do this? Well, let's just say you're running a home-based business and you can't afford any downtime. If ISP one has an outage, then you would be out of luck without this configuration. But with a second internet service provider as a failover option, all of your network traffic would then be routed out over to ISP2, keeping your business up and running. So let's take a look at how to get this configured. All right, guys, so I'm logged into the Edge Router. Now, a couple of things to note. I'm using an Edge Router X for this demonstration. I've set it to factory default I'm logged into the Edge Router's interface at 192.168.1.1, which is the router's default address out of the box. I've set my computer to a static IP address on that same network. I think I gave it 192.168.1.2 with the 255.255.255.0 uh, .255 subnet. So now, if you're interested on everything I just talked about on how to initially uh, connect to and set up an edge router. I'll put a link to a video that I did on that up above. However, for what we're going to do today, we're going to set this edge router up as a dual WAN configuration with failover. And once you log in to 192.168.1.1, you're presented with this particular message of basic setup. Do I want to proceed with the basic setup wizard? And the answer is no for this. Also, one of the things I did not mention is that I also have my computer directly plugged into the ETH0 port for the initial configuration. Again, that's covered in that other video that I had linked up above earlier. So now that we're logged into the Edge Router X interface, we're going to come over to the Wizards tab. And under Setup Wizards, we're going to look at Load Balancing. And it says here, use this wizard to set up load balancing with two internet connections from different internet service providers. Okay, so let's take a look at configuring the first internet port. So in that diagram, we talked about ISP1 being on ETH0. So I'm going to leave this set to ETH0. And I'm simulating the internet using a USG. I have the USG LAN1, will, LAN port 1 will be ISP1. LAN port 2 I have configured to a second network so that'll be simulating ISP2 so both of those connections are DHCP so I'm going to leave ETH0 set to get the information from the ISP as a DHCP connection now in your case that might differ your ISP might be giving you a static IP in which case you would select static and fill in the information here that's supplied to you by your ISP or you might also have a PPPoE type connection from your internet service provider as well. Again, you would get this information to be filled in here from your ISP. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to leave E0 set to DHCP. I'm going to leave the uh, default firewall enabled. We're going to move down to the second internet port. Now we have a choice of setting up the port we want to create the second WAN interface on. But in the diagram, I mentioned ETH1, so I'm going to leave it set to ETH1. And again, the same thing applies here for your second internet port, whether it's DHCP static or PPPoE. Again, I'm going to leave it set to DHCP for the purpose of this video. I'm going to leave the default firewall enabled. And here we have the option of failover only. I'm going to check this. So basically, this is saying only this interface if the other failed. So ISP2 on ETH1 will just be sitting there waiting 
for ISP1, let's say, to go down before it kicks in and takes over. So I'm going to check that. Now I'm looking at my land ports. I'm going to expand this area here. And I'm going to leave the land on switch zero, but I'm going to change the I the address to 192.168.100.1. And I'm going to leave the DHCP server enabled because we need that. And for the purpose of this video, guys, I'm going to keep the existing user, but I would suggest you create a new admin user and not use the default UBNT UBNT. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and click on the apply button. And we get a confirmation message here of everything we want to configure. We're going to say apply changes. The configuration has successfully been applied. Let's reboot. And then it asks us, are you sure? And we're going to say, yes, I'm sure. Okay, so now we're going to lose connection to the router. So while the router is restarting and putting the configuration into place, I'm going to unplug my computer from zero and I'm going to plug into one of the LAN ports. On the diagram, I had the computer plugged into E3, so that's what I'm going to put it in here. I'll be right back. All right, guys, so the edge router did restart and I'm logged back in and a couple of things. So I had to take my computer out of E0 and plug it into one of the LAN ports. So in the diagram, it's plugged into E3, so that's what I did. I plugged it into E3. And you can see here on the screen that E3 is lit up. I also had to change my computer's static IP address so that it would obtain an address via DHCP from the router, and I've done that. To log into the router, we had to open our web browser and point it to the new um, gateway address, which we changed to 192.168.100.1. So again, if you want to know more uh, about how I did all that and see all that in detail, again, that's in that other video I did on the initial setup of an edge router. Now, from this point here, you can see if we take a closer look, we have our first WAN here on E0, and it's disconnected, and I'll explain why in a minute. And we have our second WAN here on E1. So the reason that they're both disconnected is because I have not yet plugged in the um, interfaces to the simulated internet. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to plug um, the first LAN port of the USG into the WAN, first WAN port. I'm going to plug the second LAN port, which is simulating my second internet from the USG into WAN 2. Once I do those, we should see this disconnected here uh, become connected, and then after a page refresh, we should show the IP addresses. So I'll be right back. Let me just plug those in right now. Okay, so if we take a closer look now, you can see WAN 1 and WAN 2 both have a connected status, and WAN 2 populated with the IP address, um, and now WAN 1 populated as well. Okay, so we have our WAN 1 simulation, we have our WAN 2 simulation, we have our local uh, LAN on switch 0, and you can see that I am connected, my computer's connected to E3. Okay, so, Let's see if we have an internet connection. Let's bring up the terminal and let's try to ping Google. And there you go, guys. We have a successful uh, response from the Google server. Now, keep in mind, we're in a triple NAT situation here. So I have a home router in place and I have that home router, which is feeding the USG. So the USG is just plugged into a switch on my home network. And then the USG is actually simulating the internet for the edge router. So we're in a triple NAT situation here, and you can still see that we're getting a successful ping out to the internet. Now, let's just test the, um, lo not the load balancing, but the failover situation. So ISP1 should be up, ISP2 should be up. Let's do a trace route out to Google and see how the traffic was routed. Okay, so let's take a look. So we originated here at the edge router, which is 100.1. 
it routed through the lab USG at 192.168.1.1, which is the address of ISP1. And then it went through my home gateway. Okay, so it did work. Now what we're going to do, let me clear the screen, is I'm going to unplug ISP1 from the edge router. So in fact, what I'm doing is simulating an outage on ISP1. Let me do that now. Okay, ISP1, let me just get this out of the way. ISP1 has been disconnected. So you can see here the first WAN is showing disconnected and the E0 up here is not lit up. So technically, if everything is working well, our traffic should be routed out to the internet via ISP2. So let's bring that terminal tool back up. And again, let's do a ping. And you can see, even with uh, ISP1 disconnected, we're still getting a connection out to the internet. And if we do a trace route over to Google, we should now see that it's being routed through the um, ISP2 interface. So let's take a look. So we're starting at the edge router. And then this time, instead of going to the 192.168.1.1 ISP1 interface, it's going to 10.0.0.1, which in this case is ISP2. So guys, it seems to be working correctly. If you have a need for a situation like this, this video will help you get it set up. I hope you liked this video. I hope you found it helpful. That about wraps it up for today, guys. And if you did find the video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Please check out some of my other videos up above. Please remember to subscribe, like, and share, and use those Amazon affiliate links. It doesn't change your price, but it does help out the channel. My name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. As always, I thank you for watching. See you next time.